unfortunately, as of time present, number one may no longer be true, because we probably have now had too many everyone's in the world. So everyone here, I hope, lives a modest British lifestyle. How many of you have got big gas guzzlers? How many of you have a, uh, a patio heater that heats up in Cambridgeshire? Not many. We, we, we live modestly. But unfortunately, our world, which is three quarters salt water and half the rest of it, mountain and desert, is looking like not big enough now. Humans already utilize about 30% more of the cropland, the fisheries, and the forestry than there is. We don't allow it to regenerate. We are overutilizing it. And by 2050, we will need 200% of it. And if we were to deal with poverty, as I hope we all want to, we will need 400%. 400%. That's four worlds. Are we going to find at least one other planet? Or is it going to be, as the next slide shows, uh, this situation? on the right. It really isn't a debate whether sustainability is, is it important or not. You know, sustainability is not the option. The only option is how it happens. It either happens the gentle way through family planning, that's why I'm a specialist in family planning, or it happens the nasty ways, added to now by the climate change nasties of the excessive heat, hurricanes, flooding, and so on. And to me, that's the ultimate inconvenient truth that I quote uh, Al Gore at that point. But the problem is, it's taboo, isn't it? It's a taboo subject. Uh, and uh, I find it the elephant in the room that nobody talks about. Wonderful that the elephant in the room, in this room, is being talked about. We, we discussed it. OK, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's lighten up a bit. Let's lighten up and become more positive about what can actually be done. Uh, we don't have to be quite so. We're, we're maybe three seconds from midnight, but we're not there yet. First of all, please help me. Will you all undertake a little project today for me? And that is never from the 14th of October onwards will you say those words up there. You will never find me in any in situation, except in the context of this slide, saying population control. So will you in the rest of this meeting and from the rest of your life never put those two words together? They have been so damaging. They instantly make your hearer think of India in the, in the 1970s and of China at time present. Use any other way you like to say it, you, like my phrase, population matters. Please don't say population control. It's harmful. So there's one thing we could all do. Next thing, let us talk about two sides of the same coin. It's not either or. I've already said this several times. I came here from Swansea by bicycle. There's nobody greener than I am. I don't even own a car. Okay, I did hit a small lift on the train. But I, 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 I'm led by Bronson Bike. All of us need to do all of those things. So I totally agree about the right hand side of the coin. But we must also make available all the methods of family planning that we take for granted in this country, and all of us live more equitably. It's two sides of the same coin, it is not either or. And one of the sad things I keep reading, for example, from Fred, and I'm slightly taking it to ask here, is he says in a document that's just come out, he says this. Every time we talk about too many babies in Africa or India, we are denying uh, the fact, we are denying our own culpability. Just talking about too many babies. Why? Why would I say family planning as well? Do people hear family planning instead? Not the case. It's two sides of the same coin. Oh, there's me on my Brompton two weeks ago in the, in the Brompton uh, Lennon Championships. Okay, we're not going to do it by uh, uh, banning sex, are we? It's part of our animal nature. So we're not going to do it. That was Paul Amatis' problem. He didn't know about contraception. He, 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 he talked about that. We've got these wonderful methods which I write about. Why don't we hear it on the radio? Orgasms without babies. That's what contraception is. It's fantastic technology in the nick of time to create balance in an imbalanced planet. So, last few slides, uh, Chairman. Acceptability of family planning in poor settings. You are mostly geographers. I'd love to see how many biologists or natural scientists have we got in the room. Oh, good. Allies. Allies. <laughs> Any biologist, including the one who introduced me to all this, knows that no species, whatever you like to talk about, whether they're locusts or mice or anything, can breed up beyond a certain level. There is a limit uh, to the environment. We are so bloody clever, we humans, that we've managed to stretch our environment. We can live in hot places, cold places, wet places, everything. But we have a finite planet. 
And one of the great things that the economy, it's a world that's run by biologists rather than by e economists and demographers and so on. They'd have woken up sooner to this point. And we get often told that in rural poverty, every mouth has two hands. We get told that high infant mortality has to be compensated for by poor, in, in, in poor situations. And I know this, I'm from Africa, I'm an African. But the real thing is, it looks like catch 22. It makes you think that they won't accept climate planning until the wealthy and the kids survive. And that's what Oxfam has often been saying. And as a consequence, we think we have to push poor people for their own good. There again, this whole idea of population control, which I reject. Whereas the reality is, back to biology, folks. Back to biology. Unmet need is there. And let's not forget sex. Biological function, sex. Anybody in this room who's had two kids, did they only have sex twice? Of course they didn't. <laughs> Anybody who's had... Ten kids, did they only have sex ten times? Of course they didn't. The biological default state for all couples, rich or poor in the world, is a large family. Think about it. That's the default state. So having a large or a small family is not something that is a deliberate choice so as to cope with needing more kids to till the fields or compensate for, for, for the dying. It is actually something that will happen unless you have contraception. And what I find as I travel the world is that so many women have barriers that stop them using what we women think is now a human right and would take, our women in this country would take as a human right. And there are barriers to, barriers to accessibility that need to be identified and removed. And they have been. <coughs> a huge range of countries which Fred will draw attention to, from Tunisia to Thailand, from Cuba to Costa Rica, even Kerala in the south of India. When you do the right things, women without any coercion choose to have small families. So I'm just about there. The total fertility uh, uh, rate decline, which is the average family size in these countries, was achieved, in fact overachieved, and they'll have to think about having larger families to replace in Korea, when you made contraceptives available and accessible, removed the barriers, and corrected misinformation. I find when I go back to Rwanda, women are learning that the pill makes you sterile for life that all condoms have got holes in it. There's a heck of a lot of misinformation which needs to be corrected by good education and use of the media. And then you will save lives because, in fact, regardless of the environment and everything else, women are dying of unplanned pregnancies, bad enough to die. Maternal mortality is the equivalent of a jumbo jet crashing every 10 hours in the world. That's unfair. Uh, and part of it is one third of women dying with a pregnancy they didn't want in the first place. Bad enough to die a pregnancy wanted. So, very nearly my very last slide. It is true, we have done a great job. We've brought down average family size to two and a half. It's also positive that when you go to Africa, they may not have shoes, but they've all got mobile phones. Did you know that 60% uh, uh, of the world, uh, the number of mobile phone users per hundred, in other words, in, in the entire world, there are 60 uh, mobile phones for every 100 people, including the children it's a, and, and the old people. It's, it's amazing. So what an opportunity. Let's use the media, let's use the modern media, like mobile phones and, and so on, to deal with this problem of too many humans plus all of us wanting to do this. That's my last slide. <laughs> and that's my last final sentence. We are over-consuming and we are ready to <coughs> Thank you for attending.